President Biden's White House still thinks a soft landing is possible for the economy, despite economists warning of a recession next year. Joining us now to weigh in is Tomas Phillips, and former acting counsel of economic advisors chair. Tomas, good to see you. So we have the administration that's saying soft landing. Economists are saying recession. What does Tomas say? <laughs> Well, I think there's good news for 2023, which is there's some strong deflationary pressures because we, you know, we had an enormous money supply growth of 30% in 2021, which with a lag came in as inflation in 22, and that has now completely dried out. The bad news is the policies that are being instituted, I think, you know, in the omnibus and the IRA, the Inflation Reduction Act which is a White House that kind of believes that if you take from some people and give it to other people, total economic activity among the two groups is going to go up, which a lot of economists don't believe, essentially. So there's a lot of growth depressing aspects of these uh, two new spending bills. Yeah, no, I think it's a good point. You know, I, 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 you, you go back, what, a year and a half, and you had the administration uh, talking about inflation, saying it was transitory. Obviously, they were very, very wrong about that. Um, and now they're like, we're going to have a soft landing. What is the job of the administration? What's the job of the White House? Are they here to, to, to lie to us, to gaslight us about what's really going on in the economy, and maybe they cheerlead the economy? Or is it their job to sit back and go, you know what, we have tough times ahead. We're going to get through it, but tough times ahead. I, I just, it seems like they keep getting economics wrong consistently, um, and it almost seems intentionally. Yeah, I don't know if it's intentional or not, but I think it's very bad economic advice that the president is giving, given what he's talking about. I mean, look at the IRA, which is supposed to be, you know, spurring growth, Inflation Reduction Act. And he goes out and says that this is going to create new green jobs. And that's completely misleading and backwards. It's like saying that if we created a typewriters program through the government, we create a lot more new jobs by having a lot of people going into typewriting. It's basically an inefficient way of using energy. And, and we're going into more costly energy by, by all these policies. And, and for the same reason we would have more typewriter jobs, we would have lower economic growth when we're pushing people into less efficient energy. Green energy is less efficient. Otherwise, it would be cheaper and the market would go there without the government, essentially. And, and, and he goes out and says that this is kind of somehow boosting growth by co going after an inefficient, inefficient energy. And I think that's very, very misleading, potentially uh, intentional. And it's a good point on the lie to the American people. The Inflation Reduction Act had nothing to do with reducing inflation. It was a it was a Green New Deal uh, down payment for sure. Uh, Tomas, I want, I want to switch gears on you um, to the issue of workfare versus welfare. Uh, Tomas, many Republican-led states are pushing to get people off government dependency, even as the Biden administration bans work requirements for food stamps. What do you make of this? Yeah, I think, you know, right now we have a lot of people missing in the labor force. And one potential explanation is that, you know, the employers are competing heavily with the federal government to attract workers. Think about what the federal government does by paying for your food, housing, health care, etc., even under COVID emergency, but even after those restrictions are going to be pulled, they're basically offering a job where you have paid leave for 100% of your time. And imagine competing with that as an employer. So what has happened is that basically labor supply has been cut. And if you have a supply cut in any market, you have increased prices and reduced volume. And that's true in labor market too. So we have reduced volume by having 3 million roughly missing workers that are not participating in the labor force. And we're having wage increases. You see particularly that in October, November job reports that because em employers essentially have to compete away, bid away these workers from these programs by having higher wages. And that feeds it itself into inflation, obviously, because wages is about you know 70% of what companies spend their money on in terms of uh, producing things. You know, Tomas, it's not like we want to be not compassionate, right? I mean, if, if, if someone falls in hard times, you want a program there that might be able to help them out to maybe lift them up. But we're giving food stamps without work requirements to people in the best working years of their lives with no dependents. They're able-bodied. And Joe Biden says because of the pandemic, which, by the way, has passed, we need to make sure that those folks can still stay home not actually go look for work when there's millions of jobs available. I have to wonder, 
what the intent of this policy is with the administration, because you and I both know that once you've been out of work for whether it's a year or two years or three years, it's that much harder to get back into the workforce and be a contributing member of society. Yeah, you lose your skills, essentially, which reduces your future earnings capacity, essentially. And I don't understand how it's compassionate to not basically push people to try to search for work when, they, when, they have a, when they're not working, essentially. I don't understand why it's compassionate to have them, you know, not trying to get back into the labor force. That's the work requirements. Not that you have to have a job. It's that you're going to have to basically work with uh, someone to try to find a job. And I think that's not, I don't see the compassion in not having that in place, essentially, because you make them not having a high earnings ability in the future, which is presumably everyone agrees we should push for. You know, you can you can reduce the benefits when you have good times. We've had good times in regard to jobs, at least. Reduce the benefits so people go back to the workforce. If we have a recession coming in, you know, four, six, eight months, jobs might dissipate, and therefore you might want to go, okay, we can help people out because they can't find a job. It seems like this administration, Tomas, has this absolutely flip-flopped and backwards uh, and the economy is suffering, employers are suffering, small businesses are suffering. Uh, it's an absolute tragedy. Uh, Tomas Philipson, thanks for joining me. Thanks for all your intelligence.